A lot of players in Fortnite are currently lost without the ability to build. Even if building has currently returned at the date of you watching this video, this video is guaranteed gonna have tips in it that are going to help you to win more games in Chapter 3, Season 2 of Fortnite Battle Royale. What is going on YouTube? My name is Oni, and today I'm dropping you 110 tips on how to win more without building. Last night I was playing on stream and only managed to be able to play 5 games. After my first 2 deaths, however, I ended up getting 3 back-to-back -back dubs. Not only that, I'm a seasoned battle royale player. I have got a long history in H1Z1 and a long history in Apex. I can tell you right now, these skills and techniques I'm about to teach you are not the average Fortnite player's skills. This is going to help you 110% getting more dubs when you don't have builds. So in this first segment clip, you can notice when I drop from the get-go, I'm hitting sprint. So it's very important to get your sprint bind down pack. And I ended up changing it to scroll wheel mouse up. I found this works really well with me. If I jump or if I pull out a gun, it cancels it automatically. The way that I move around the IO guard, I am never once standing still. I'm never once running in a straight line. Also notice when I reload, I crouch so my head's not staying in the same place because you move slower when you reload. When I go to approach the second IO guard, I wait for him to shoot first and myself to reload as I'm crouched behind a box. I just had a striker pump and I swapped it out for a drum shotgun. Now, although the striker pump is currently the best shotgun in the game, there's a new meta for currently not building. to use the drum shotgun, the auto shotgun second, and then the striker pump third. You need a gun that's a fast rate of fire. Having a gun that's a single shot is not going to help you out, especially with the slow pull out time with the SMG. You want to be able to have something that shoots fast and does a lot of damage because you want to shoot more than one shot at people if you're not going to be building. Now, the reason I initially dropped out my drum shotgun for a striker pump is because I was low on ammo and you do need a relative amount for using the drum. I'm trying to hit a few shots off the rip with the firm wall. Now, you can notice also that I'm pre-firing on that wall. So if that guy decided to pick out, I would have hit more shots than them. People are going to be taking cover and if you push someone in there in cover and they come out of cover, they're more likely to win the engagement as it takes a second to pull out your guns while you are sprinting. Notice as while I'm sprinting that this guy starts shooting at me. Now I can't pull out my gun while sprinting but you can pull out your gun while sliding so it's very important to learn the new meta of sprint, slide, shoot. And the minute you're sliding, you want to start shooting. The reason that sliding is so imperative to shooting right away is you pull out your gun much faster than jumping or just straight out pulling out your gun. You want to learn how high you can actually jump with the jump mechanic. You want to practice sprinting and jumping and climbing. Sprinting, jumping and climbing is going to be imperative. Movement is the most important thing after positioning in order to win without builds. Like many other battle royale games that don't have mechanics like buildings, vehicles is one of the most important things that's going to help you in the game. Vehicles can provide a way for you to push people a lot easier. Sorry to interrupt the video. I'll be right back with you in a second with the tip. If you could please do me the favor of subscribing and also liking the video, I'd greatly appreciate it. Currently, only less than 10% of people who watch the videos are subscribed. If you could please help me hit a million subs one day, I'd greatly appreciate it. Or for now, at least a thousand subs, which I don't even have. But enough from me, back to the video. When using the tanks, you kind of want to spam, shoot people, and you want to shoot it in the vicinity. You can hit them for about 70 damage. If you hit it a little bit like far off them or a little bit far away, it hits for about 30. If someone close range pushes your tank, you want to change seats so you have a faster rate of fire gun on them. This is also going to make it harder for them to hit you as you're not eye level with them. If they decide to then get into the tank, you want to shoot the bottom section until it's close to blowing up. Once it's close to blowing up, jump out of it, hit a couple more shots at it from range, and it should kill the person inside. Next thing you want to take note of here today is the current meta for loadout. Out. So I talked about previously how shotguns have changed a lot for the meta. You want to carry the striker org or striker burst rifle or you want to carry the thermal. Now you can carry either or. I think the org is probably the better one of the two. The thermal has its own advantages. If you can carry both, carry both. But I always suggest carrying two heal slots. Currently with overshield in the game, I feel like you don't need as many heal slots. Yeah, I made a very key mistake. I was standing still for far too long and I could have gotten beamed or sniped by someone. So you want to be very careful when using these guns. You want to sway side to side, move side to side. There's a few circumstances where you don't have to but that's going to be a future example that will be coming up when healing currently you really want to do it inside buildings but if you currently are loot swapping and you want to pick your gun back up right after when you're healing make sure you spin around so you have a full idea of your surroundings you can see if someone approaches you or is about to pick you and shoot you and you want to spam crouch spamming crouch means less likely people are going to hit headshots and they probably will miss a couple shots while using the burst you're a lot less likely to get beamed as hard from range considering the mk7 is longer in the game vehicles vehicles are the most important thing right now in the game a lot of people 
people are going to be skipping over this, but vehicles are needed for rotations. Also note, there's no point taking out llamas when no builds are in the game. The most you'll get out of it is six good splashes, and if you don't have heals, maybe you want those splashes. But I'm telling you right now, standing out in the open and shooting when you can't build if someone comes to third party is going to cost you more. I approached this building and I've posted up. Now the reason for this is in a battle royale where there is no build, your rotations are the most important thing. Every time you want to rotate, you want to rotate to an area that has a lot of buildings or a lot of natural cover. This is so it's very hard for people to third party. If you get hit, you can heal, so you're not standing out in the open. Also note here, I don't stand still once during these clips. I'm always moving side to side. I'm always spamming jump. If you're using the thermal rifle, you want to pull it out and you want to look around. It's going to show you where people are a lot quicker than just spotting them naturally with your eye. Eat the thermal fish if you can. As you can see here as well, once again, I am rotating. Every vehicle counts for helping you to rotate. Once it shows the next zone, you want to move into zone as fast as possible. You don't want to be sitting around for a long amount of time and you don't want to be rotating late. Rotating early and getting positioning before someone else can is very, very important. The minute the zone closed, I found an area that would have cover. I pinged it, I took a vehicle and I went straight there. Note, while I'm trying to pick this guy and I'm pretty sure this guy saw me, I'm swaying side to side. If they have a sniper, it's very unlikely they're going to be able to hit it. Don't just sway one, two, one, two. Move around a lot. Make it very unpredictable where you are. To use bushes. Normally in the past, bushes have costed you a fair bit, but with the thermal AR, seeing out of a bush is more easy than ever before. You can take a lot of easy shots on someone if someone can't see where you are. This is a really great example of what to do once you peel a little bit of health off someone. That person is going to be healing right away. And in Fortnite fashion, typically what you do is you try to crank and you try to get high. But now with current movement and no builds, you want to sprint and you want to slide. Note the way I'm approaching this as well. I'm not coming from the left side here. This is because they will have cover and they'll be able to shoot me. I've taken an angle where the rock has cut their line of sight and they can't see me. Don't make the same mistake of this guy. If you get pushed, move back a little bit. Maybe go behind a different tree or something, but don't try to completely run. Unless you have a vehicle next to you or natural builds, you're going to be caught out in the open and you're just going to get sprayed a lot easier and die a lot quicker. Next big tip, I've been saying this a lot since the start of last season, but make sure you have audio visual on. Audio visual is going to save you in a lot of circumstances. In this circumstance, I could tell there was a tank approaching and I wasn't standing out in the open before I could hear the tank. If the tank saw me because the tank's got thermal vision, it would have been an easy free shot for 70 damage for them. When you're in a location where you can have lots of cover and you can peek to see where people are, you want to be approaching from many different angles. You don't want to sit in one spot and people are going to have less intel on you. I did make a bit of mistake while peeking out here. This was a good angle for me to take against the tank as the tank found it hard to see me, but I peeked out too much and I got stuck a little bit, which forced me to take a little bit of damage. Take note of what heals are around you. Even if you're not using them, make sure we take a mental note of where that is. As you can see here, this person had a little bit of a shot on me, but I was hitting shots on them. I actually cracked them, so I decided to push it, but they ended up hitting a snipe. This tip is very, very important. If you're in the upper regions of the map, people will shoot trees on you if you're standing behind them if they can fall. Though this person sniped me, I stopped them having the ability of killing me instantly with a tree by knocking the tree down myself. If you knock down a tree yourself, it'll fall towards enemies, it won't fall towards you. When enemies shoot trees, it always falls whoever's closest to the tree and it won't damage them. So do shoot the trees if you're near them. You can no longer get high ground from everywhere right now in Battle Royale. So there's either two very important parts of positioning for end game currently in Fortnite and that is either A, take the high ground or B, take somewhere with natural cover. Something I think that's going to be costing people a lot of games currently at the moment is they're going to have zones where they won't be able to rotate to the zone because a mountain will get in their way. Having high ground before this is imperative to ensure this doesn't happen to you. I prefer being around natural builds, especially when the zone's this big, but when it starts getting smaller, you really want to start approaching it in a different way. Something to take note of here as well is you don't need a sniper or a thermal if the zone gets smaller and smaller. It becomes less and less important and can cost you more. If you're aiming down the sides of a gun that sees pretty far and limits your vision and other people are around you the minute they see that you're aiming at something else they're gonna beam you so it's very, very important to not have these late game. Although a sniper can help you clutch an end game, I do not recommend it. If you're in an area with natural builds, look for other heals and drop those guns for heals. It is also very important to note where enemies are. Currently at this point in the game, I realized I was top three. I could see someone shooting ahead, so I decided to push towards it because I thought it could have been an easy third party. I heard another person shooting on my right, so I felt very, very safe because I knew there was only two people left alive. Taking note of where these players are ensured that it was very easy for me to kill this first 
person and not be worried that I was about to get beamed from the side. I already had them quite weak, so I decided to stick it out and hit the shot rather than going into cover. Because if I gave them a few extra seconds, they could have ran off, they could have popped, their overshield could have healed to 50 and then they could have got more shield. Now, take a note of where this last person is. I know they're inside the bush here. So I want to be very careful with my positioning. I don't want to give away my position because it's going to make it easier for them. Something I've done here as well is when it gets to end game, these trees can actually provide more cover for you. So although these trees can actually fall on you and you can make them fall on other people, if you're next to them, you don't want people to shoot them at you. So shoot them yourselves and you can use it as horizontal cover when people are near you. It's very important to stand behind trees in top two situations. Trees are going to provide you the most cover possible. Although people can shoot trees and break trees as well, if someone's aiming at a tree and trying to break it, that's three shots for you. You can pick out, hit a shot before they can hit one on yourself. It's very, very important when shooting a tree to always move constantly so they can't see you or move in an area where they don't have a line of sight to you. Always take the shot. If you hit a headshot, you hit a multiplier. Moving into my next tip here today. When you land, you want to take high ground. At any of these areas that have blimps currently on the map, you do not want to land at the bottom because you are going to have low ground people are gonna hit easy headshots on you. Although I got contested for this gun with sprinting currently in the game and having an overshield, it's actually possible to survive off spawn there. As you can see, they only hit my overshield. It already started coming back and I found a gun. I put myself in a position which gave me more cover and I slid around a corner so that they couldn't see me and it was easy for me to take a shot. I turned on someone who had a gun at least five to 10 seconds before me. This is very possible nowadays in Fortnite if you don't get a gun off spawn because of the movement. Shockwaves can be used to your advantage in order to get people away from you. If someone has an easy shot on you, a shockwave can actually send someone far away and enable you to have a few seconds to reload or pop a shield. I noticed someone else's footsteps, so I was being very, very careful of my positioning. I don't want the person to see me first, I want to see them first. If they're out in the open, it's going to be a free shot. If I have an angle on them, it's going to be a free shot. So crouch, walk around your areas, hug the walls so you have cover. You never want to hug a flat wall, you want to hug a, near a corner of a wall. If you're near a corner of a wall, if they approach from the other side, you can easily turn around to the other side of the corner and your overshield can come back before you get hit. As you can see there this person was pushing me I tried to shockwave them away and I pushed up to closer arrow for them I also used the slide technique here again which allowed me to pull out my gun easier this person was jumping a lot which actually made it easy for me to hit them with the drum shotgun if you have high ground try and shoot anyone who is below you you're gonna hit a lot more headshots and they're a lot more out in the open they have less cover than they think if you hear a fight currently in the game and you know there's not a lot of people around it you want to push it the reason for this is it's gonna make third parties a lot easier if you approach an IO guard you want to knock them ASAP. IO guards can beam you and they will get in the way. So take the shots while you can. You should be able to kill an IO guard and at least have a few ammo left in your SMG and AR if you also have a shotgun. If someone's inside a building and they're not coming out, you don't want to approach them from the stairwell. It's going to be easy shots for them. You can actually still get height and climb buildings in Fortnite. The buildings are designed well enough for you to be able to jump up to a second story. Try and get height and take out a roof so it's easy to see someone. You can also hit people with jump shots through windows. Reducing the time to kill is imperative for your success in order to win. Now, now that you can no longer box up to heal, it's very important you use vehicles to your advantage also for healing. If you did not know, vehicles actually have a first shot protection if they're fresh. If the glass is not cracked, you can actually sit inside a vehicle and heal. And if someone shoots the first shot at you, the first shot is going to hit the glass before it hits you. You can then quickly change seats or you can quickly jump out of it. If you spot an IO guard, it's always better to shoot first before it shoots you. The IO guards will turn and hit you. I did notice someone else shooting. Better to turn and fight the real player and return to the IO guard in a second. When looting supply drops, you want to make sure you don't have your back exposed. You want to have your back to dead side of zone where less people are going to be or towards some form of a wall that will provide some form of cover. Now that you can no longer cover up good loot with builds, you can actually move those loot into bushes or other areas that can't be seen. If you got shot at and someone misses the first few shots, try and sprint as fast as you can into cover. It's very important to not sprint all the time everywhere 24-7 because this will mess you up and you won't have your sprint when you need it to get away from an engagement. Sprint away as fast as you can and then try and get high ground on someone as it's going to be easy to hit shots. If you do spot tents or other pieces of props that can get into your way, break them so they don't become an issue if you have a close range fight around that area. Once you're rotating to zone, you can actually make your vehicle auto drive. While you're auto driving, if you did not have time to pre-select where you're going to go, open up your map and find an area that has cover and ping it. Although tilted towers had a lot of availability here in this game, it would have been hot. So it's best to avoid it to avoid third parties. Now that there's no building, third parties are going to be worse than ever. Pimp out your vehicles as much as possible. With as important as vehicles are, you need to be using all attachments you can for them. This includes top tires and the cow catcher. This actually breaks build. Cow catchers can be used to give you a form of build that you can use that you can actually stack. But if you have good positioning, you don't need it anyway. Whenever you are going to pick up loot, you want to sprint to it and change direction the minute you pick it up. This stops giving people the ability to have an easy shot on you or a free shot. While rotating to zone, if you get shot at, it's very important
important to continue on your journey unless you are directly being hit. If you're directly being hit and someone is hitting shots on you with the SMG, jump out. You're a lot less likely to get beamed from range with the MK7 no longer being in the game. As you can see here, I had multiple people shooting at me. Now, if I jumped out and decided to fight these people, I would have got third party by another person. This is not worth it at all and I would have died right away. These players do not know how to play without builds and they would have ended up dying in this match regardless. How do I know that? I won the game. I decided to not take a direct approach into the building of where the IO is. I decided to take high ground and have a little bit of a look at this newer area. Although it's very important to have cover in the game and good positioning, it's also important to have all of your angles covered. This little platform down here had less points of entry and less cover that had more of a firm idea that there would be less people around me. You always want to get high ground as much as possible. Knowing the map is very, very important in order to win. Also learning the new mechanics in the game. You can actually load yourself into these cannons to, in order to get high ground in order to rotate fast. Put yourself in the cannon so you can get high a lot easier so you're not just running out in the yoke on a mountain. As you can see there's footsteps here under me. I know these are IO guards. Sometimes not killing IO guards is the play. If an IO guard is not out in the open and they can't see you or you can't see them, it's very important to leave them alone. The reason for this is if someone tries to rotate and they come close to where you are or they try and sneak under you, an IO guard will spot them and start shooting you. Therefore an IO guard can act as an alarm for yourself. Don't always take direct points towards launch pads and other things on the map. Whenever you can jump and climb, jump and climb. It's very, very important. Take out IO guards when they have a line of sight of you so they never get to shoot you. Scan and have a firm idea of where people are. Take note, these scans only take a minute to recharge. So if you happen to remain in the area, let it recharge and reuse it. If you decide to try and get a mythic this season and you want to take on a boss, when you take on the boss, you want to give yourself natural cover. Although when building is added, you can build in order to stop yourself getting hit from a boss. Natural cover has always been better for fighting bosses than actual builds as the bosses don't shoot natural cover and they will shoot builds. As you can see here, when fighting IO guards or bosses, I never give them a direct line of sight to me. I always have some form of cover. Let your overshield charge while fighting them so that you never lose any health and you don't waste any of your heals. If you happen to get hit and your overshield gets lost, sprint out of the engagement and slide away. Make sure you always change directions. If you run in a straight line, you're gonna get hit. You wanna move left, right. You wanna move behind cover. Also note, when fighting the guard, I am moving side to side and I'm jumping. This is making it harder for them to hit me. I'm not spamming jump constantly because if you spam jump constantly, you will get jump fatigue and it will harm you. Here I'm in a top two situation. I have absolute height. So scanning was very, very important in order to see if this person was near me or sneaking around. Because they didn't pop by my scan, I had an idea what side of the map they were on, but I don't think the scan reached that far down. Having audio visual on in this circumstance let me see that they were gliding. So I knew where they were directly on the other side. The only time you don't have to rotate early is in top two situations. If you have a better high ground advantage or a better advantage you have an idea of where someone is, take it until you have to rotate. Learn the map and know where every launch pad is. Knowing where launch pads is is very important. Use every single bush you can currently in Fortnite, not just the big ones. If you're using a small one, make sure you sit behind it so your bum's peeking at the back so they actually can't see you peeking up through the bush. If you see an enemy near a tree, shoot the tree. When you want to approach them, you want to not give them line of sight and you want to slide. While fighting, for example, in this fight, I'm giving myself lots of cover with the tree. I'm moving around it while reloading so it gives them less of a chance of being able to kill me. And the way that they are jumping actually makes it easy to hit them because the more they jump, the slower they get. Sliding, sprinting, and jumping very rarely is better than jumping heaps. When landing off the bus, you want to run around like a madman. Although you you don't know where the loot is and you might not have loot off the rip if you are sprinting running and sprinting into a gun is a lot better than just running into it normally if you're pushing towards a gunfight and you see footsteps that are not coming from that gunfight closer to you stop pushing for the third party and fight the person that's closer to you although this person had no gun if they did i would have been out in the open and they would have had a free shot on me if you get sniped at and you don't know where it's from you want to get cover first inside of a building and then peek with the third person mode in the game to see where they are in this case it was a bot but having this angle inside the building where they couldn't see me, even if it was a real play, it would have been the best choice option. When pushing for a third party or when using a sniper, always take the shot right away. You never want to stand still too slow with a sniper. If someone has an AUG or a thermal AR or a sniper themselves, they're going to hit shots before you can. The only circumstance you ever want to stand still while using the thermal or the AUG is if you know you're on a dead side of zone. I've cleared out the whole area behind me. I'm towards the back of the map. That is the only time you really ever want to stand still if you're shooting someone with a scoped gun. If you're sprinting out in the open, you always want 
to sprint towards somewhere that will give you cover. You never, ever, ever want to sprint and then just keep running straight. Once your sprint runs out, if you're near cover, wait for your sprint to come back so that you don't get shot at, you're less likely to get shot, and then you can sprint to the next bit of cover. Taking these as multiple steps, sprinting from one to another, and then waiting, and then sprinting again, is very, very important. Use third person to your advantage. If you have to be patient a little bit, be patient a little bit so you can see where someone is. Hitting the first shot is always most important also. When going towards loot, sometimes it is important to actually sprint towards it. You never want to stay in one location for a long amount of time, especially if you're fighting there. If you were just shooting a gun at one location, people are going to push for the third party. So the minute you get the kill, you want to loot as fast as possible and move out so people don't come towards you. It is very important to not catch yourself out in the open. If you have a few kills, just go to somewhere in zone and post up. This is currently a different type of battle royale without building and having the most kills in the world is not important. Never take a linear or direct path towards where you're going. If you see a fence, jump over that fence. Don't walk around it. Even when building comes back, you want to be doing this also. Don't place a stare as it will give people an idea of where you were last. Once you have a final area in zone or you're posting up around cover, make sure you put your vehicle around the back where people aren't going to be able to shoot it. People see your vehicle, they'll see it as an opportunity to lie it on fire even if you do a lot of damage to someone and you just peel them you don't want to push them right away or continue aiming down sights at them having a bad amount of tunnel vision will allow someone else to shoot you a lot easier as you can see although i just peeled this person's shield and i did a lot of damage to them i'm checking to my right side making sure that the other player that is currently alive in the lobby isn't near me and is not pushing me if you've been fighting someone for a long amount of time and you're in the top five situation and the zone is still relatively big you want to move to another location with equally as good cover now although you might run to someone on the way of this happening this allows that person to not have intel on you and it gives you a competitive advantage because if they don't move from where they are you have intel on them you can hit a first shot on them where they have no idea where you are if you're in top three situation you never ever ever want to engage you always want to be the third party if you're in a top three situation if two people are fighting, they're less likely going to have full health. Third party in this fight will make it more likely for you to win the game and it'll be less likely for you to take damage. Don't make the mistake this person did. Do not take high ground where there is no way down. You do not have build. If you take a rift, don't go on top of a weird situation where there's no water under you or there's no way down from it. This is going to give people at range a really unfair advantage towards you and you're very likely to die. Even when shooting someone who doesn't have any cover, you always want to move where you are. This person was pre-firing me on this wall and I moved before they even started pre-firing me. Moving into another position not only gives the other person who's not even in the fight no intel of where I am, it also allows me to get a couple extra free shots because I got a new angle on them. Climbing on top of buildings and getting height on top of buildings is very, very important. You always want to rotate as soon as possible. This gives you the competitive advantage because if the other person has not rotated yet, if you're in a top two situation, they're going to have to come towards you and move out in the open. So having this cover before them is very important. When rotating to a new position, you don't want to sit inside of buildings. The most damage you want to do is typically at mid to far range. So make sure you climb on top of them whenever you can. This is the only other time you can also sit still in battle royale. If you're in a top two situation, don't fret crouching still for a long amount of time, waiting for the person to make a mistake running out in the open so you can hit some free shots. Positioning is currently everything in the game. Using trees as cover in top two situations is the most important thing. If the person starts shooting at the tree, you can always pick out and try and hit them first. If you feel like someone's about to push towards you and get inside of a bush, which they will actually have an advantage because they'll be able to see out of it easier than you are able to see in it, the bush. In this situation, I was a little bit off from where they were and actually gave me a disadvantage. If you do get shot in top two situation, if you have cover, wait for your overshield to come back before trying to peek them again. This person made the mistake of pre-firing. They actually shot on a side where I was able to peek out from the opposing side to hit a free shot on them. Once you hit that overshield or a little bit of shield, as long as you almost have full health and your gun skill and your aim is decent, it's time to push the fight. You do not want to give this person any second for the overshield to come back. This might be the only opportunity you have to have a competitive advantage. If you can push that close range, you can also throw the person off and you can make them more flustered as you seem very confident. So I hope those tips have really helped you guys out. I hope you can get more and more doves this season as it goes on. I know it's very, very hard currently with building not being in the game, but even when building comes back, I'm sure these tips will help you. I have a lot more tip videos coming out for chapter three, season two. So make sure you subscribe. That includes the most easiest improvement you can do in order to improve at the start of every season. Learning the new meta, explaining what every single new gun is, how to master movement, how to sprint, landing in airships, and also what you can do in Apex to improve in Fortnite. I forgot to do this last little extra bit of the video. I just wanted to say thank you so much for watching. Make sure you hit it with a like rating, and I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Goodbye.